Hi everyone, I'm Anjali Kaiser Potter and it is really lovely to be here. Thank you Radiant Law, Alex and team for having me here and inviting me here. So I've been a lawyer for over 30 years and much of that time has been spent as in-house. So I suspect that's why Alex is asking to speak about the true power and purpose of in-house law. When I started my law degree at the University of the West Indies, I didn't even know that after my first three years, I then had to do two years in law school to be able to practice as a lawyer. Everything I knew about law, or thought I knew about law, was influenced by TV shows long before your time, like LA Law, mm -hmm. right? Law and Order, mm -hmm. the original, before SQ. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what I thought I knew about law was cemented firmly by the time Ali Hukdil came out in 1997. No one told me anything about being an in-house counsel. So, let's talk about what being an in-house counsel means. And if you heard that as capitalized speech, it's because it is. Because I'm going to lift the veil and show you the good, the bad, and the ugly. So the good. You get to act as a strategic business partner. You're not just giving advice. You're not just interpreting the law. What you are doing is applying the law practically in real-world business scenarios while shaping the legal, the strategic direction of the organization that you're working for. And you develop a super strength, right? Legal expertise is a unique blend of legal expertise with business acumen. But like all superheroes, we have to face our kryptonite, right? And I see this as the quest for independence. What does independence mean? As a nose counsel, we are required to give advice which is independent. And independent in this case means the advice is impartial, it is unbiased, it is free from conflicts of interest, it is in the best interest of the organization which employs us, and we have to maintain our professional independence, and it must not be subject to pressures or other stakeholders. But here's the catch. Sometimes, that advice that you have to give is not going to be the advice your CEO wants to hear. So you become the witch, the ogre, the police officer, and guess who signs your paycheck? The CEO, right? So you have to maintain that balance and walk a tightrope, and sometimes it means you have to run on that tightrope, right? And that brings us to the downright ugly. So superheroes all have to face adversity and in-house counsel are no different. I see these as the fig leaf scenarios. And in your career as in-house counsel, if it hasn't already happened, and even if it has, it will happen, and it will happen more than once. And that's when you are asked to validate, endorse, sign off on a course of action, or turn a blind eye to activities which, while not strictly illegal, skirt the spirit and intent, if not the letter of the law, and raise ethical red flags. And your integrity is going to be put to the test. Now there's a legal principle, an ethical legal principle, called conform or resign. And that speaks for itself. But it's not black and white, because we all have bills and mortgages to pay, right? So the reality is, you can't just resign, and you also can't just conform if it means that you're going to be in breach of your professional and legal obligations. What do you do? For me, I take each challenge as an opportunity in disguise. So today, I have on my Anjali clothes, but tomorrow, I might have to don a cape or a cloak, depending on your point of view, right? And that's where you come in. You guys are the contracting experts, the contracting specialists. And what we have to do as these contracting experts is take our company along the path where the spirit the letter and the intent of the law are manifested in the contracts that we write. While we support our business strategy, while we fulfill our legal responsibility, and while we observe our ethical obligations. And I'm not talking a suits like, and I know you know that one. I'm not talking about suits where if I want to win, you must lose. I'm not talking about adversarial contracting. I'm talking about mutual benefit contracts where you bring the power of your expertise to make sure and stand firm against exploitative or deceptive terms, 
but you're bringing the company along to where it needs to be, right? And, and that's, that's, a, that's a big skill set. That's something that we are unique in being able to do. Drafting those contract clauses for mutual benefit so that all parties benefit. It's win-win, not win-lose, right? And, you know, with that comes a lot of trust and respect. You co-create and collaborate on contracts. It redounds to the mutual benefit of all parties and long-term business relationships. It's only win-win, right? So, you know, we've talked about the good, the bad, and the ugly. And being in-house counsel means that you have to navigate the good, the bad, and the ugly. But it is a unique opportunity to develop your legal acumen and your business expertise, make a meaningful contribution, and while we may not save the world long term, like Superman, who is obviously my favorite superhero, we can contribute to the way business is done. We can contribute to how the companies who we work with engage in business. And by doing so, we can contribute to the evolution of the legal profession.